Hey, Ton, I was helping my cousin Danny change the oil in his Astro van out in the garage, and he got his little oil on the floor, and I slipped, and I fell, and I sprained my neck. But luckily, my sister-in-law, Shar, she swiped this neck brace for me from the hospital where she works at, and I don't got any economic prospects right now, except for the Queen of Hearts raffle at St. Scholastica's, but I think the Illinois Gaming Board is going to shut that down, so I appreciate you letting me do the ads real nice right here. New Life CBD oils are a Colorado produced CBD oil company with the highest quality verification that you could have in the industry. This stuff is pure and it's great. They offer a wide variety of full spectrum and broad spectrum products, including tinctures. They got gummies like this right here. They also got soothing balms and creams. They even got CBD for your dog. That's amazing. You go to newlifecbdoils.com, N-U-L-I-F-E, cbdoils.com. It will give you a coupon real nice here, and you get 20% off your first purchase. Okay, thanks. I'm going to try some of these out on my neck real fast, and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, take care. Bye. NewLifeCBDOils.com. Go to NewLifeCBDOils.com and enter code JADRULBASTARDS for 20% off at checkout. Again, enter code JADRULBASTARDS for 20% off at checkout. These are full-spectrum CBD oils and tinctures. Nice. Meaning they got all those beneficial secondary metabolites and cannabinoids. Not just the CBD. All the other good stuff in there, too. Again, enter code JADRULBASTARDS for 20% off at checkout. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Bonnie Does, and today we're back in South Africa, starting off about 30 kilometers east of the city of Cape Town, near a little town called Gordon's Bay, right above those cold ocean waters, looking at some more of that famous vegetation real nice. Here we go. Okay, so right here just above the road on Falls Bay, you can see we got a pretty weird uh, member of the geranium family. This is Monsonia specio, so let's take a look at that flower. You can see, it doesn't look like your typical geranium flower. You look at that style. You can see, look, those, those anthers are just, just dropping pollen everywhere. Look at it. You can see the foliage right there. Filamentous, lacy, highly dissected leaves. Just coming up amongst the uh, leucospermum. And then looking at that leucospermum, let's talk about this. Because this is a pretty beautiful uh, member of the Proteaceae. Leucospermum belusi. Look at those flower heads. Very fragrant. Little white pin cushions. With red involucres. Red involucral bracts. Foliage imbricate. The leaves all imbricate and what the shit. Almost looking like a damn manzanita. And of course there's those... Those four tepals peeled back like ribbons. Look at those pollen presenters with a little bead on them. And again, this thing smells incredible. Known locally only from the immediate vicinity. And these bluffs above uh, the beautiful, very freezing water. He, he forgot where he lives. He's got, there's so many damn little holes in there, he forgot which one is his. <laughs> Xylocopa, there's a cool little, uh, oh, this guy's going home too cool little native bumblebees. You see them all mobbed up on a, the Podolyria, that massive fabid shrub. Get in there. Find your one. You, you, you got a market or something somehow. You got an address or something. Look, there's like 50 little... There you go. There you go. Okay, so here we are at the mountains uh, near the town of Betty's Bay on the coast, and I got a really weird plant. It's not flowering, but I might as well show it to you anyway. This is uh, its own subfamily of the sunflower family, actually. This is uh, in the genus Corymbium. And the subfamily is uh, Crimbioidae. They're they're fucking remarkable because they don't look they don't look like a composite at all. I mean, when the leaves when the when the flowers come out, you know they're pink. They got uh, there's one floret per capitulum, but uh, the leaves especially they're looking like a monocot, parallel venation, kind of leathery. You know, if you saw this, you'd think it was a monocot. You'd think it was some sort of weird geophyte, like a damn some sort of weird uh, irid or or it's something in a, you know, something else in Asparagales, but uh, anyway, you know, this is a, been wanting to see this subfamily for a while. 
because it's just a more weird shit that Aster AC can do, more weird shit that the composite family has up its sleeve. And uh, I believe the whole subfamily is endemic to the African continent. So uh, just another one of those weird evolutionary branches in the sunflower family tree. But uh, yeah, anyway, there you go. There's Corymbium. Look at that fucking, what the shit? I can't believe that's a, how is that a, how is that a composite? How is that a sunflower? Fuck another one look just looks like some sort of damn irid looks like an iris how the fuck is that a composite but then when you pull the leaves up this is what's a good diagnostic trait see that fuzz you just got the those fibers at the base of the stock anyway these things bloom in the in the summer here which is december so we won't see them this time but uh there you go now you know about them at least what a weird and that's another weird branch of the sunflower family Fucking it makes me wonder about all the uh, lineages that have gone extinct since the Oligocene. Now, at the base of this mountain, we got a plant. This is a genus we got, uh, we get in North America, but I don't believe we have any that are nearly a tree and a half feet tall. This is Anemone tenuifolia from the Ranunculaceae. As evidenced by that flower, you can see those many stamens. Many stamens surrounding a, an apocarpus little nodule, each one of those brown things itself being a style topped by a stigma. Look at all the fuzz, whole goddamn plants fuzzy for that summer dry environment. A showy, a showy bastard. Look at it. This thing is huge. There's the, uh, the leaves down there. Kind of looking like celery, kind of uh, sclerophyllous. Oh no, they're just covered in fuzz. Never mind. They're kind of, hey, they're kind of waxy up top. What a weirdo. What a cool, cool weirdo. Nice variation on a theme right there. And then down here too, it looks, you see, it looks kind of dry, which is surprising. But then when you actually, you know, go a few inches into that soil, it's moist enough. And it's moist enough for these drosteras to be growing. These epic carnivores. There's a drosera glabra piece. Got a woody stem, a coalescent uh, woody stem drosera. A woody drosera. And you got this little guy too. He's just little round sundews just dotting this whole slope. Who's he got in there? What's he got with those spatulate leaves that just tenderly caress its insect prey? You got a couple guys in there? Oh yeah, right down there. No, those are just... Sometimes they clutch them, you know? Hold them tight as they slowly digest them. You know, coming up right the, right next to the king protea, we got uh, we got this wily wily bastard. Look at this. See this? Uh, those those leaves kind of look like an oak, don't they? They kind of look like a, our native California tan bark oak, uh, and they're from the same order, but a different family. This is an order Miracaceae, just like that uh, other Miraca I was seeing down there. This is a uh, Morella serrata. Actually, it might be in Miraca still. I don't know. They they. They changed a bunch of stuff up. You can see there's, it's uh, wind pollinated. There's the old flowers, the old inflorescences. But, uh, you know, little little woody subshrub. All right, another cool composite, another cool aster. This one's not blooming either, so I don't know why the shit I'm showing it to you. Just to put it on your radar, okay? This is uh, a mutisioid, which, uh, you know, that's a whole clade of asteraceae that is mostly in South America. It's where it's most diverse. Uh, it really, you know, again, look at that, look at that, look at that, ah, super, super coriaceous leaves, very hard, stiff, leathery, you got the velvety uh, indumentum on the undersides, glabrous up top to easily shed moisture, there's the, uh, the old uh, scape when it does flower, but uh, anyway, they got bilaterally symmetrical uh, flower corollas, the individual florets, not the flower head, but the florets that are inside that big daisy flower, you know, there's, what, 50, 60 of them per head or something? Anyway, you know, just a, just a remarkable genus. I think, I believe it's the only mutisioid aster in South America and uh, quite a few species. Okay, here's another bizarre variation on a family, which, uh, you know, we get quite a, quite a lot of in North America, but none of them look like this. This is Hermes velosa from the carrot family, APAC. You can see it's doing quite similar to that Gerber I just showed you. It's got the, uh, the wool on the undersides, glabrous up top, folded over to easily shed moisture, and then there's that inflorescence on that scape. 
not flowering now, but I mean, just, I mean, just to even see that and think that's a carrot, what the fuck, you know, <laughs> what did, what did evolution do and how long did it take? And what, you know, what did the intermediates look like that are now extinct? What a weird, but cool plant. There's a compound dumbbell, what's left of it. Oh, look, here we got it. We got another fuzzy bean, another podolyria. Which uh, is that uh, kind of smells like bubble gum and grape soda. The other species does when it's uh, a large tree, but this one doesn't seem to get too much bigger uh, than this. You can see it's just re-sprouting after this fire from that uh, base right there. There's those, again, those simple leaves. Oh, look at them. Look at all the hairs on there. Look at all the strigos hairs on that abaxial surface. Again, glabrous up top, kind of rounded. And there's the fuzzy bean. The flowers are mostly done, but this is fucking hilarious. A fuzzy bean. Ooh. Look at it. Look at the fuzzy bean. Let me touch your fuzzy bean. That sounds terrible. Forget I said that. Anyway, here's the here's the uh look at it. There you go. There's a just typical banner wings and keel, but with those wheel, those wings pronounced so much uh you know, almost kind of hiding that keel. Okay? You still got the stamens in there? Inside that white, the little white keel in her. Very Georgia O'Keeffe, like so many peas. Still a banger. Ah, there you go. There's one that's complete. Look at that. You like that, huh? Sick fuck. Keel's just totally hidden by those wings. There's that Retzia. The Retzia looking all nice with the golden top, the little orange top. Flowers are mostly done. You can see they just kind of hang out nearly sessile in this this wide, this broom of uh, plasticky feeling leaves. Another cape endemic. Used to be in its own family, Retsiaceae. Now it's in a still basey. But still, fucking banger of a banger of a plant right there. I love these cape endemics. Those are the ones I really want to see. Look at it. Almost looks like a little Asteraceae capitulum. Poking out. See those? I you know, like, saw all the Cape Endemic except for, uh, what is it, the Geisoloma. There you go. How's that for a pea? God damn, this thing looks like it would be fucking weedy if it got introduced to North America. <laughs> it would probably have too much success and take over, kind of like the Scotch Broom does. But anyway, there you go, Soralea, <clears throat> Soralea, Aphila. Look at that. Again, looks like, goddamn, looks like juniper. The leaves look uh, cuprosoid. Barely there. Just little scales. But then you look at those banner wings that keel. See that? You got a purple banner. Oh, that's nice. Holy shit. Look at that. There you go. George O'Keefe right there with a little fuzzy calyx too. To warm your, your cold, dead heart. Huh? Ah, oh, with the black fuzz in it too. And there's that keel with the 10 stamens inside. Did I have 10? Sometimes peas can, some peas can be weird. Sometimes they lose one. They can only have nine. Anyway, another weird variation of that thing. What a beaut. Okay, now you can see we're in a little bag. Okay, a little uh, wetter area. Okay, looks very picky. But we got this weird composite. Doing the whole monocolis thing. It says Osmotopsis asterichoides. Ain't the notable growth on that. Again, look, no leaves, but for the uh, top 5% of the plant. And then the leaves actually smell Oh, like Vic's, uh, like Vic's Vapor Rub. You know, I was never a raver, but this is making me feel like I was. Like I'm going back to 1996, you know. There's some house, they're doing a, a, a house shows or some damn goddamn warehouse that Mayor Daly's trying to shut down on the near west side. They got all you, the baggy jeans and everything and everyone's on MDMA. It's kind of what it's making me feel like smelling it. You know, that was never my scene. But, you know, now I feel like maybe it could be because I rubbed this and stuck some in my giant Dago nostrils. Anyway, look at that little uh, little daisy flower right there. South African endemic genus. Fuzz. You got lots of fuzz on those leaves, too. Just like everything. Just a, I, I love the convergent habit among so many of the plants here. Like this, uh, this Erica. Erica perspicua. We've seen this actually by the other original spot. The flower's... Still going up. Just finishing up here. Again, no leaves on the bottom, like 70% of the plant. But then you got, look at those flowers. Look at the color on this. With the pink, just a little bit, little hint of violet on the end. And those ericoid leaves. And then here we go. Here's a here's quite a rare one. It was thought to be uh, extinct for a while. This is an Erica Pattersonii. Again, monocolis. Looks like uh, almost like a, 
like a spruce branch with little yellow flowers on it. Monocolus, just like you were, we were seeing a bunch of this stuff in New Caledonia. It's got a, got something to do with that nutrient-poor soil, probably. And there's those little yellow Erica flowers. Four Corollas fused together into a tube. Look at the anthers in there. See the style poking out. Known from only a few populations around Betty's Bay. Does Betty know about it? Does Betty know what what went on here? Who was Betty? Don't answer that. Well, maybe I may. You know, I'm kind of curious. You could answer that if you want. Who the fuck was Betty? That's that's a stunner of an Erica right there. Remarkable. Look look at all those guys. See that? Yeah, what I, I meant to say it's, it was uh, thought to be extinct in Cape Point, but it's only known from uh, the coastal strip. It was rediscovered in Cape Point, over there on the Cape Peninsula. But you could see all of them coming up. You almost wouldn't see them if they weren't flowering. You got your metalacea, your paper daisy, one of the nymphalioids, sororia, little diminutive protea, and of course cassitha stealing from everybody. Indiscriminately stealing, looks like the orange silly string back there. Avocado family Loraceae. Hey, look, we got Searsia, another sumac, another one of the 9,000 species of Searsia we've seen in the past three weeks. Searsia glauca. Glauca. Not in flower, but you got the fruits up there. You still got those triffid leaves. Leaves of tree. Don't let it be, not this one. Why don't you sensually caress it, you fuck? Huh? It's not poison oak. Same family, though. Okay, here we go. It's standing precariously on the side of the road. Ah, uh, we got a nice orchid. See, we've seen them just looking like little pink ice cream cones. Huh? Just, uh, just, just, you know, spattered on the side of the road. You know, we were seeing them going 60 miles per hour, rubbernecking, swerving with the shit, and then we decided to actually stop and pull over. There you go, species of Ceterium. Look at those, you get those, uh, let me see the, like, the, the teeth-like protuberances of uh, pollinia on it. Now you can't see them, right? I have to get down, I have to get down more. There you go, now I'm standing above that feeded swamp, the feeded bog with some of the trash in it. Ceterium carnium. And uh, we're uh, we're trying to get up there to get a, a nice money shot. Oh, is that nice? God damn it! I can't. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I see. No, not quite. You know, these. I will have to. We're gonna hold on. Yeah, you know, you could kind of see the uh, pollinarium up there. Kind of, you know, if, unless they're maybe they're gone. I don't know. I'm I'm not about to give this flower a rectal exam, so I'm, though I'm not normally opposed to it. But either way, there you go. Look at those, look at those uh, spurs. Look at those spurs on there. And then of course there's those fleshy leaves. Almost don't really feel like an orchid. They're a little bit uh, thick and then scrap. They're not so juicy. That leaves just kind of perfoliating up the stem, clasping a little bit. What a great genus. Same genus as that one that smells like rotting meat. Is that species that smells like rotting meat to get the flies in there. Hey, here we go. Here's another nice one. Gotta love this genus. Morella, formerly Mirica. This is Morella cursifolia, wind pollinated. Same order as oaks. They they associate with the actinomycete bacteria in the ground. Just like uh, Ceanothus, just like alders, just like some members of the rose family. You can see what they call it, cursifolia, because the leaves look like quercus, like an oak. And there's those uh, wind pollinated flowers, those anemophilus flowers they're just just clouds of pollen coming off these when they're going off holy shit and then and a little bit further down the road still uh you know sitting precariously close to it we got a another ceterium next to the one i just showed you ceterium corifolium look at these what's going on with these look at again with the spurs see the little spurs but then you've also got, this is a much more, uh, those lateral sepals, or is that the labellum? I can't even see. Is it the whole labellum? They just look like lateral sepals. But you, look, nice money shot of those uh, pollinia up there. See? On this one, they're already gone. But on there, they're still there. They haven't been removed by a pollinator yet. Looks like a little orange construction flag. Just on the side of the road. God, what a... Fucking banger of a look at those bracts too. 
So yeah, there you go. Looking at looking at that flower, you got those the five tepals coming down, and then it, then one of them's been fused, or one of them's been turned into a little hood. He's fused into a hood with the spur on it. See that? Five down below, one up top. It's much larger, and that's where you got the uh, pollinarium. Then there's a little spur in there. Yeah, most of these seems like they've had their uh, pollinia picked off yet. That bottom one still had them, though. Where'd it go? This guy? I don't know where the shit he went. Whatever. Hey, you know, there's a lot of these, so I didn't feel bad just pulling one little flower off that I secced to show you what's going on. There's those pollinia. See that? So on carnium, this one, the pollinia are hiding. You can't really see them when you get up in that tube. Okay, when you get up in that, uh, in that perian. See that? They're kind of hiding behind that, uh, that little rad, but they're there. See, they can't see them now. You actually got to dissect the flower. There they are. Looking like a, looking like a scrotum hanging down. But, uh, you know, this is just uh, just another variation on this, the theme of Satyrium where one petal has been, or one teeple, excuse me, has been fused into a hood. I keep saying fused. Just enlarged and modified into a, into a hood with the spur on it. And then you got five down below. See that? You got five teeples down below. And this goddamn little bubble gum ice cream cone see that one people's a large cuculate hood with the pollinarium in it and then uh the other five are just uh kind of the lower half of that flower and that top one of course has that spur with the juicy attractant in it i'm gonna get fucking hit by a car right here what am i doing goddamn orchid just blew a load on me i didn't even mean to do that i i was i didn't get money shots yet but i actually got, accidentally took the pollinia off the there they are right there but that's nice nice illustration little pollen packets you could look at it you could see the individual pollen grains you could see how it just sticks to a pollinators back too look at that that wily wily goddamn orchid man god satyrium is such a cool genus Get out the road! What are you doing? Look at you! Look at the attitude on you! What are you doing? God! Like I like this little cute one. He like he likes the uh, he likes the geranium. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's nice. Hey, I... hi. What's your name? Uh, my name is Tony. Are oh, you like that? You like salvia? Do you got any uh, raids on towns coming up planned? You got any raids you're planning? I, I'll be down. And it concludes today's episode. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.